Moving forward with our series on how to kill gradients, you may have guessed by now that I'm trying to find faster, more efficient, and more elegant ways to deal with them than messing with dynamic background extractions, plenitude of sliders, and esoteric boxes with variables to change and configure. I feel a removal tool like that definitely has a place, but it's best applied when there are very subtle differences between the luminosity and hue of your intended subject and the unwanted background. And so, in these videos, what we've been aiming for is an elegant and situation-specific collection of useful tools that can work faster and are more intrinsically intuitive and put you in complete control of the background removal process. So what we have in the image above is two shots that I shot of the Sol Nebula on the same night. It was shot when the moon was at about 75% in January of 2024. And I had about five hours of exposure time before the moon rose and five hours of exposure time after the moon rose. Because it was only a gibbous moon, and the moon was quite a few degrees off from the Sol Nebula, the moon's effect on the background wasn't too bad, though it's there. The image on the left has a, a sheen, I guess you could say. It is brighter in the center throughout it in, in an unbalanced way than the image on the right, which is inherently darker in the space. I've already run spectrophotometric color calibration on these two images. And, to make sure that we are comparing apples to apples, I used the screen transfer function, rather than my usual method to set the histograms on each image. Now I'm just going to save them as TIFFs and move them over to Affinity Photo, where we are going to quickly, I think you'll find surprisingly and extremely easily quickly, deal with that gradient in our post-moonrise version of the Sol Nebula. Alright, we're now in Affinity Photo. The post-moonrise version is active in Affinity Photo on the left. And the pre-moonrise version is active in Earthen view on the right so that you can see and compare and contrast. You can see how much cleaner and sharper the pre-moonrise version of the Sol Nebula is. Let's see if we can get the post-moonrise version looking as good. So I'm going to the right and I'm going to duplicate the image and the original is locked and made invisible. It will serve as a proof layer that will retain all the information from the original image prior to having extracted the gradient. On the top, we're going to go to the Filters menu, go down to Astrophotography, and select Remove Background. When the Remove Background tool is evoked, you'll see what Affinity Photo calls a handle in the center of the post-moonrise image. I'll grab that handle and drag it over to a dark point of the image. This will serve as an example to Affinity Photo of a hue and luminosity range that we want to pull back on. Then in the Remove Background tool, I'll check the Sample at Handle Position box, and we can see what the background removal looks like live as Affinity Photo calculates it based on the one sample position. But if I think I can do better than that one sample position, I can then grab the handle and drag it around and see how Affinity Photo will recalculate the unwanted background just by moving the sample. The way Affinity Photo calculates the background based on the handle position is dynamic and it looks at ranges of hue and luminosity in the vicinity of the handle. In the Remove Background tool, you can define how many pixels in size the sample is by changing the radius value from 5 to 20 pixels. The handle doesn't represent the size of the sample. It's just there for you to drag the sample around. I think the position of Handle 1 is pretty good in that we have better color than we did when we had moonlight glow in the image, but the image is now clipped and over dark. We can tell by looking at the histogram top right. Now there's a lot of nebulous gas in this image that I don't want to clip, and with the image contrasted this much, it's hard to tell where. So I'll open a split view, and I can drag the split view left and right, and examine the image both before and after our present change, which assists with finding the dim nebulous gas, and helps me decide where to put the next handle. About center right seems like a good location to put our next handle. And when I put one there, we can see live what the outcome will be. We don't have to click a check mark in DBE, wait while it processes the next iteration, decide if we want to keep it, and then maybe start over. Then I can drag the split view back and forth and compare the change to the original again. Once I decide I roughly like where that second handle is, I can adjust the positioning of the handle, making subtle but important changes to the overall luminosity and hue balance within our image. My goal is to find some space for that handle away from any nebulosity within the image, or at least with as little nebulosity as possible. I think that'll do, but the image will probably benefit from another handle or sample point. Because the nebulosity is so faint, I'll click the split view again, and we'll be able to see traces of the nebulosity more easily. 
But I just can't find a good place outside of Nebulosity to put another handle. But you know what? We don't need to. The Remove Background tool has five sliders on it. The bottom slider is Output Black Level. We can move that to change the amounts of black that the Remove Background tool injects into the image. And the tool also has a grayscale slider, and we can adjust the grays or whites within the image, providing a second way to balance between the darks and the lights and get very fine control over how much background we want to remove from the image. And if one feels a need to work on any of the color channels, the red, green, and blue color channels are there as sliders as well. There is, I feel, just a little bit of blue in the space, but I don't want to change that with the color channel sliders. That blue is of a very dark luminosity range, so it's best to change that on the Curves tool. And that means the background extraction is done. Now I had to slow down this video for the purposes of narrating it, but the whole process took under two minutes. And what I especially like about it is the entire process is live. I can add as many handles as I need, add or reduce black or gray with the sliders, and alter the color channels with the sliders all in the same tool. And if I was working with a complex and difficult gradient or background, I could run one iteration with the tool and remove a certain shade range, then another iteration with the tool and run another shade range, and so on, and I can do each on a separate layer so that all the previous information is preserved on the layer below. One last thing, the Remove Background tool is itself destructive. It will permanently change the information, but only on the layer that you operate on. But since we are working in a non-destructive layer-based photo editor, we can keep the original image as a proof safely locked as the lowest layer on the right. Something that is different about the way the Remove Background tool works compared to other tools I've seen is you should keep the number of hooks to a minimum. Use as many as you need, but not more than you need. That can introduce problems into the image. Once the image looks like what you want, once the background looks like it's extracted, apply the filter to the image, and then you're done. Finally, let's quickly pull up our pre-moonrise version of the image and compare that to our post-moonrise version after the background has been extracted. Not bad, but nonetheless a little too dark. I'll quickly run the Remove Background tool again with a couple more sample points, and this time push up a little higher on the Black Output Level slider. And in just a moment, we get this revised version of the image. So that's it, fast and easy background suppression and or extraction using Affinity Photo's Remove Background tool, which is live and interactive through each step of the process. It takes a little getting used to, but when you do, it makes the whole thing so much more convenient, and being able to see the changes you make dynamically really helps. Yes, I definitely like the second lower contrast image more. So, I think I'm going to take it back into PixInsight, run the exterminators to sharpen and denoise the image, touch up the curves, tease out the blue in the center of the nebula, and that little extra effort yields this, derived in moments from our background extracted version of the Sol Nebula. Well, I hope this proves to be a useful technique for you, one among many as we continue to address those pesky backgrounds. Now, as always, have fun and get out there and shoot the sky.